We acknowledge in Milwaukee that we are on traditional Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk, and Menominee homeland along the southwest shores of Michigami, North America's largest system of freshwater lakes where the Milwaukee, Menominee, and Kinnikinnick rivers meet and the people of Wisconsin's sovereign Anishinaab, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Oneida, and Mohican nations remain present. And so I just wanted to do that to acknowledge who was here before Milwaukee was the Milwaukee that we know today. We have been working on a project called Watermarks for a couple years that has a couple layers to it. One is it's conceived by the artist Mary Miss, and one of them was a very large scale idea that will begin with that smokestack over there being lit uh, in a way that it will be blue during the day unless it's going to rain, in which case it will be red. And there will be a flashing light uh, that will then alert you if it's going to rain to the fact that you should be conserving water. This reflects our idea that art is part of life. We're very committed to social justice, to environmental justice, and to our community. Uh, to my right is Alexis Rockman. Uh, the artist who uh, has this amazing body of work called the Great Lakes Cycle at the Haggard Museum of Art. And to his right is Dan Adams, who's planning director of the Harbor District. And so what we just want to do is talk about this area of our city that's so important from the perspectives of an urban planner and an artist. I really relate to the, the ethos of Milwaukee. I'm kind of a grinder, you know, blue collar, make all my work by hand, very much into work ethic and stuff like that. And I really relate to this idea that you know, the city has such an interesting and specific history and it's been through a rough time and I think it's on the way up and there's so many fascinating things about its relationship to the lake that I want to learn about. To tell you a little bit about the show, um, I got a phone call in 2013 um, from a curator in Grand Rapids who asked me what would be my dream project and I said, why don't we do something about the Great Lakes because it's part of America that really is overlooked. It has 20% of the world's fresh water. It's a very young body of water, um, 12 to 14,000 years old. It's really a glorified puddle from the glaciers. And it has such a fascinating ecological history and it's been so abused and kicked around by humans um, that I wanted to tell that story and that's what the exhibition is really about. So, uh, where we are right now, if you would have been standing here 200 plus years ago, we'd be in the middle of a large freshwater estuary, mostly rice marsh, where our three rivers, the Kinnikinnick, or the KK as we call it, Menominee and Milwaukee, come together and flow out into Lake Michigan. It was a very ecologically rich place, and as such, it supported a number of Native American villages in the area, uh, most recently from the Potawatomi Nation. Um, however, as Milwaukee was settled, as European uh, immigrants came and established here, industrial Milwaukee settled on the western shore of the harbor, and then they were surrounded by a number of uh, small neighborhoods that grew up that kind of fed uh, employees into these places. But one in particular interest is where we're standing right here, which is now Kajubes Park. And so there actually used to be a fishing village on this spot, settled in around the 1870s initially, <coughs> Uh, by an ethnic group from northern Poland known as the Kajubes, with their own dialect of Polish called Kashubian. Uh, they started settling this area out on the island. It looked very similar uh, to where they came from uh, on the Baltic Sea, northern Poland. Uh, and when they came here, they said, hey, it looks like home, we'll set up shop here. So from the 1870s until roughly the 1920s, uh, there's anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 people and living in a collection of small cottages and homes here. They were mostly uh, fishermen and uh, got a lot of their living and livelihood uh, from the lake out here as well. It also became a popular nightlife destination. People would hop on little boats on the western shore. Friday night, come over, get a fish fry, dance, get your drinks, and then at some point in the middle of the night, float back across the river and uh, make your way home. Uh, until the 1920s, really, uh, when the city uh, eventually kind of pushed them off the island. No one had title to the land here. But the site of this specific park was the home of Felix Strzok, the first Kashub actually born on the island, who then had the last remaining home and tavern on this spot right here. And so where you're standing is the smallest park in the city of Milwaukee uh, and the last remnant to the Kashub people. And if you want to meet any of their descendants, the first Saturday of August every year, they have a big party and a potluck right here. Everyone is welcome. If you want to talk about immigrants that didn't come necessarily on the first wave with humans, um, the Baltic Sea sort of got me excited because as you, does anyone know what a zebra mussel is? <laughs> Round goby. So you know those are from the Baltic as well. So there's a nice convergence there from the human population and our invasive species. They're, you know, hitched a ride, um, inadvertent. They are victims after all, but when they got here, they really were excited about the resources and being able to exploit what, um, this, this territory that um, had a number of wonderful niches for them. 
roughly in this area you're standing here is actually the original mouth of the harbor. This is where our rivers used to flow out to Lake Michigan. Uh, it was not a great place for ships to come in and enter. So back in the 1850s, a bunch of business, local businessmen and civic leaders got together. Uh, the straight cut was dug out uh, to create a better harbor for ships to come in and access the inner harbor and the rivers. And then over time, this was filled in or silted in over the ensuing decades. Um, so it really shows you how much this place has changed and really, when you're talking about geologic time, really, really short amount of time. Yeah. So uh, this is a walk, so I think we should probably uh, start moving along. From my understanding, and we have a lot of experts here that can correct me, it's kind of always been a peninsula, and the only time it was briefly an island was when they cut the harbor mouth, and then the original mouth was still here, and there was a gentleman by the name of Captain uh, Jones who had a little shipyard here, hence the name Jones Island, um, but it really only existed as an island, I think, for a few years. And part of the port's partnership with the Harbor District is working together through adv advocacy and collaboration to realize how we are going to um, create that port experience here where um, the port remains a vibrant economic artery for the city um, side by side with a choice neighborhood and um, it's through our ongoing collaboration with the Harbor District that we're going to be able to achieve that in Milwaukee and we're really excited. There's a lot going on in the port right now so in 2018 the port carried 2.5 million tons of cargo. Um, a lot of what the port does today is um, carrying salt, Wisconsin grain, Wisconsin soy, Wisconsin corn, imports of European steel, limestone, and other bulk and break bulk commodities. So the question is, what is this building here? I've been told this was the dock workers chapel. Uh, it was at one time. So right now this building is vacant. And another part of my job is identifying when you've had buildings that have entered lack of use, where do we find and how do we appropriate them for commercial activity on the port? So. And oh, I'm assuming there would have been years ago a lot more workers, stock workers were needed for the type of operations down here. Now there's far fewer people needed with automation and things like that. Um, and so this building sits fallow. We've got a great sign with the name right here. MMSD's Jones Island Water Reclamation Facility. Uh, this is the country's oldest activated sludge plant. It's been in operation on this site since 1926. And so all of our uh, sewers in the uh, most of the metro area, uh, as well as all 26 miles of our deep tunnel system all come right to this spot. The other thing to add here is we have a pretty interesting byproduct of the process over here across the street. Does anybody know what I'm referring to? Malorganite, which stands for? Milwaukee Organic Nitrogen, which we've been making since the mid-1920s as well. Uh, it's a very popular fertilizer, one of the oldest commercially available fertilizers on the market, um, and it is a byproduct of our poop. I'm working on a project about the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland right now, and they have the same material that has basically redefined what the riverbank is and made it permanent you know, what riverbanks and this area must have been incredibly variable year to year with sand moving around and must have been such an amazing place to look at wildlife and stuff like that. One of the things I wanted to point out that I was shocked by yesterday is the mounds of that white material over there, which I'm sure you know is salt. Well, you can be sure that sooner or later, every grain of that stuff is going to end up in the lake. And just imagine the, the amount of um, stress that puts on anything that's trying to make a living there. The Port of Milwaukee is a department of the city. It is, uh, um, they actually make a profit each year and those profits go back into the city coffers to kind of offset your taxes as a city resident. Um, and it's governed by a board of harbor commissioners, seven harbor commissioners that are appointed by the mayor of Milwaukee. So they are a governmental body. I work for Harbor District Inc, which is a nonprofit organization. We bring together private property owners, nearby residents, uh, representatives of the port, governmental representatives, other community organizations to work on projects and initiatives to uh, improve and change this area uh, for the future. Our organization, working very closely with the city of Milwaukee and a lot of other stakeholders, spent two years 
ending at the end of 2017 working on a plan for this area. You can go to our website or the city's website, harborddistrict.org, and check out what we call the wallop, the water and land use plan for this area. Uh, it sets out a big long-term vision for how we want to transition this area to become the working, the new working waterfront for Milwaukee for the next 100 years. Most of this infrastructure was built 100 years ago, and we're still using it right now. So what we do for the next decade or two is probably what we're gonna live with for the next 100 years. So it's very important that we're thinking long-term and thinking with a big picture and big vision for the future of this area. There's lots of different elements to our plan, everything from uh, types of uh, land uses we'd like to see down here. We wanna see a concentration of commercial port activities over here on Jones Island. We have a lot of stuff in the plan about habitat restoration. If you look at Alexis's art over at the Hagerty, um, there's a lot of different uh, themes running from the degradation of the habitat of the Great Lakes uh, to future possibilities of what can happen in the next 50 and 100 years on the Great Lakes with regard to habitat. So we really want to kind of raise the awareness and the importance of these waterways in our community and reconnect people back to that. And uh, there's a number of ways we're doing that, but I think the most immediate I want to talk about really quickly is right over there. That is the east end of Greenfield Avenue. So to kind of put in your mind where we are right now. And there's a small construction site there, which is the currently uh, under construction Harborview Plaza. It will be the first waterfront park in the entire Harbor District. For the last 150 years, there's nine miles of waterfront within the Harbor District, if you can believe it. It zigzags in and out all the way around here, up the KK River, out to the lake. None of that is publicly accessible. It is all off limits to the public. That'll be the first waterfront park where a big part of the plan we put together and that the city adopted about a year ago is that who's been on the river walk downtown? Everybody. What's a, it's a nice experience, right? It's a fantastic way to see the river, see the city. We want to extend that river walk all the way along the western shore here, all the way up the KK River, all the way to Lincoln Avenue, and then back up the, uh, the shore, uh, coming and ending at Barnacle Buds. Who's been to Barnacle Buds? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, everybody. Drinking is how you orient people in Milwaukee. <laughs>